Hello again. Welcome back to Into the Breach, where uh, we're fighting off giant alien insects. So, last episode we beat the cryogenic slabs and uh, got a time pod with a new a new pilot inside, and Bethany Jones. She has a special ability. Her mech starts every mission with a shield. And she's got a skill already, plus one mech reactor, which is great. And I'm thinking of using her to, for the uh, prime mech instead of instead of Lauren. The alternative is we could drop her in instead of the other mech pilots. Grappled by. One extra power would be nice right now, but we have we have two reactor cores to spend as well, so we don't need to worry too much about uh, her bonus power right just this moment. So I'll look at I'll look at spending the reactor cores shortly. Um, but Grapple Pie uh, already has one armor, so the shield is and five health, so the shield is less necessary. Zappy Kill has three health, and we've been tanking a bit, and no armor, so the shield would be really good there. Rockstar doesn't really get in the line of danger very much, and so bonus health, bonus shield are less necessary. So I'm gonna have use Bethany to pilot Zappy Kill. Now she's already got one skill, even though uh, so she's already leveled up once, so she's uh, short of a max level. So, so that's great. And that means we've got one spare power right now. Which probably makes sense to put into building chain. Last last episode there was a situation where there were four four different feck of with two hit points each spread out around a single building. And one of them I needed to kill to avoid damaging something else. Two others were side by side. Uh, with building chain, I would have got them all. As it was, I only, meant, I only killed one of them because in that turn, because I needed to tackle one that was on its own on one side of the building. Not sure if you know that situation of a of a easy quadruple kill will come up again, but I think building chain will probably be useful from time to time anyway. And plus one damage is, is just needs way too much power, way more than I could afford right now, I think. Technically, I could do it. I could, I could do that, but I think I might be better off spending those cores on like bonus movement because moving four tiles for these units is definitely uh, a big improvement. So let's get building chain. And before I go and spend those two cores on movement, I'm just going to check to see if there's anything else that I can spend on better. Shield ally, I don't think I'll ever use. Bonus health, I probably won't use. Rockstar gets by pretty well with only three movement for now. Uh, plus on damage. The Rockstar would be good. But with only two cores just now. I think the movement, I think getting the movement up is more, more useful overall. Well, that's actually an interesting point. Is more killing enemies more effectively going to be more useful than putting these two into positions? I could even get the plus one damage and kill much more effectively with Zappy Kill, and that obviously means Bethany would level up, get lots more experience, and level up faster. Since Zappy Kill is, is on the front lines, no, that would be instead of building chain. Zappy Kill is on the front lines a lot. It's doing three damage in a chain, could also be useful. 
I know I said I was going to get building change, but I'm having second thoughts. What I'm going to do is have a quick look at what the map. We have two maps to choose from. I'm going to go for Glacier Cliff because it unlocks uh, some extra territories, which have power bonuses, which we can hopefully use to get our power grid back up to a healthy state. So, so that's the map that we're looking at just now. There's scattered, isolated buildings, which means the Vekka are very likely to be on two sides of it. So building chain is probably going to be useful on this map. Plus one damage is always useful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on plus one damage for now. I'm gonna install another power core here for plus one move. Now if we get another power core in one of the next few missions, then maybe I might re rearrange them and put damage on it instead. But for now, I'm going to give ourselves more tactical options rather than melee hit harder. So let's go to Glacier Cliff. The local coolant station detonated, releasing storms of cryo nanites into the atmosphere. Avoid them, or your mechs may be flash frozen. It's the ice storm. Large areas of the map will periodically freeze solid. So we have one bonus objective. We must block the Vex spawning three times. That should be reasonably easy to do. We have buildings here that start off with shields, which will absorb all the damage of the first attack on them. We have a scorpion. We have a scarab, which uh, is like the artillery, artillery firing beetle. We have an alpha scarab, which is obviously a tougher version of the same, which does more damage. And we have a Blast Scion. Now I encountered these in the previous game, but not so far in this game yet. Uh, they have a passive effect. All other Vec will explode on death, dealing one damage to adjacent tiles. Now that means it's bad to uh, kill Vec next to a building. Although if it's got a shield, it might be alright. So we probably want to deal with that Blast, uh, blast Scion. Re uh, fairly soon because I imagine they're going to hang around near buildings. It tends to be their thing. The artillery guys are going to be a nuisance because they're probably going to hang back here and fire over here. So we're going to need to want to run up, uh, run up close to them. I think. We don't really have many options for pulling them from side to side either. I'm going to start with Zappy Kill here for uh, better movement options. I'm going to start with. I don't know where Grapple Pie should start. Let's try this. Now, although we were pulling. Uh, if the artillery is firing in a way to attack a building, uh, pulling it from one, to one side to the next is, is obviously going to be useful. The alternative is pulling it towards us, which means getting between it and the building, and that moves its attack point further away, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be a thing we can do. Let's see what these Vec are planning to attack, how they're planning to attack. So, if, even if Grapple Pie can't pull things around usefully, she can block enemy spawning for our bonus objective because she has armor and won't actually take damage from that. So, there's nice storm warning on these tiles here. The storm causes anything present to become frozen. I don't imagine that happened. That applies to buildings, but we'll find out. Um, and that will be the very first thing that happens. So, that means the scorpions attack will actually be nullified if the scorpion is going to get frozen. But we don't want to stay here where we are, we want to move. We have an attack on a building there, which we want to 
deal with. It will, it won't actually hurt the building because of the shield just now, but it will destroy the shield, so it's not ideal. We have an attack on this tile, which we don't care about because we're going to move. And we have three units to do this, all this stuff with. We probably want to kill the Scion first, if we can. And the only one that could do that is Zappy Kill. Uh, we could drop a rock on it with Rockstar, but we would then get frozen next turn, which is not a good idea. So we don't want to use Rockstar to attack. So, what am I going to do about the Alpha Scarab? I could move here and drop a rock on it, but I can't sit here and use the rock to push it aside. Might, maybe just wounding it and letting its attack at the shield could be okay. Grapple Pike could come and sit, sit on one of these spots and not actually use the grapple ability, particularly. I don't think it's much use for the grapple ability this turn. So if you could come here and zap the blast scion and remove the chance of explosion. Now the chance of explosion could be good if we're killing killing scion that are bunched up, but odds are it's going to be more of a liability when we have uh, scion. Uh, sorry, Vec. When we have Vec like this scorpion here getting in the way. Now I don't know when when these. Uh, when the scorpion gets frozen, whether it's going to thaw out again on a subsequent turn, I guess we'll find out. I hope it would stay frozen for good, but it probably would not. Now well, we must evacuate this area, so let's let's do that. Let's come up here. Let's drop a rock. Okay, so that alpha is half dead, and its attack will. Destroy a shield and not hurt the building. Isabel can come and chill out here and block one enemy, saving us some difficulty next turn. And before I do that, I'll move. Uh, it wouldn't matter, but I'll move here first. And let's defeat that. Well, we could defeat either, but. If we kill that one, it's going to hurt. It's going to kill the shield uh, that's not, that we have right now because it will explode, and its attack isn't going to do us any, do any problem. It's not going to cause us any problems this turn. So let's let's stop those explosions. They're probably going to hurt us. And let's go sit here and uh, not do anything. So I could I could use this targeted strike. I could actually use it to push the. This guy out of the way, but it doesn't seem the right, really right, the right time to do it. It's uh, there will probably be a time when that's a more useful thing to do. So for now, or I mean, I could drop it on there, blow up a shield, push this vet on here, and the passive ability that we have here means the vet will take. Two damage the, and die. So we would destroy our shield. That, that's fine. We would kill. We would kill this one and stop a spawn next turn. And that would actually be good because that gets us close to our bonus objective. The shield, I'm not too fussed about. And we would have one frozen enemy and one active enemy to deal with next turn, which would be. Pretty straightforward, leaving us in a really good spot. I actually think that's worth it. I actually think that's going to be worth it. Your shield's down. Bethany's shield is down, but that's fine. So let's watch what happens. No, the buildings. The buildings do freeze. I wonder if that acts like a shield then. Another shield down. Enemy blocked. Oh, we didn't block this one spawning because of the attack. Oops. 
Oh well, so now we've got an Alpha Hornet to deal with as well. I had not anticipated. Right, so the freeze is going to happen there again. So he's, even if the Scorpion would thaw out, we definitely don't have to worry about it because it's a freeze again. Uh, here's a question. Does uh, I'm going to do a test move to see... Yeah, the ice acts like a shield. So as long as, so if it's freezing buildings, that's actually really good for us. Doesn't hurt the buildings at all, and uh, it shields them from attack. So what do I want to do? Probably drop a rock on the south of Scarab and get rid of it. Isabel could move here. I pull the Alpha Hornet to this spot. And then we could zap it. We could do two damage with our lightning and it would block a spawn. And blocking a spawn means it would take another two damage and die. That way we'd have another clean slate with only fresh enemies to deal with. I think that's I think that's a good idea. So let's clean let's clean up this scarab. She's our grapple. Hello. And if I move here, I block another one, which is good. Either way, Isabel's gonna get electrocuted by a lightning attack for one damage, so I might as well attack Isabel directly to deal damage to the Hornet, uh, because that way I can block this extra spot instead of um, instead of having three enemies spawn. So let's do that. Freezing, meaningless attack. Alright, so the Hornet's gonna get frozen again, so again, not a problem for us. It doesn't look like Well, I don't know if the Scorpion's gonna thaw. Probably not, I hope not. But we'll find out. We have a centipede with three hit points and a ranged attack that spreads out. Now, the Zappy Kill can't really afford to tank or block anything else spawning this turn. Which is fine. Um, this one is going to get frozen, so we don't need to uh, do anything about it just yet. We could drop a rock on the centipede and then zap it. We can't really pull it onto any other spawn points. So Isabel can just sit on a spawn point instead. I think that's the way to go. Keep keep the vex spawning on this uh, back row and block this one because that means I got further to run. So let's sit there. Let's run up here and drop a rock. And now oh. There's a spawn point there too. I don't want to tank another. Well, that's the second last turn. So it should be fine. We won't need to tank anything next turn. So yeah, let's do that. Let's just tank. Let's just stop it. We'll have two enemies to deal with next turn. Maybe three. That's better than... That's better than three, maybe four. All right. Wait, we still got an action left. Ah, oh, the grapple. We haven't used the grapple. Um, we don't want to. More freezing. Block, block. It's got two scorpions. Oh, we're gonna get. Oh dear, we're gonna get stuck here. Whip. All right. So. Well, we actually don't have to worry about this scorpion. We'll get frozen solid, but being the last turn, I don't really think that's going to be a problem for us. Um, we do want to do something about this scorpion, which probably means drop a rock on it and then zap it with lightning. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about him at all. This is a let's stand here and get frozen situation. Should be fine. I hope. 
Oh no, that's going to push us into the other enemy and deal two damage and kill the pilot. That is not a good idea. Let's undo that move and think again. Well... Genemy can certainly take the attack. That's actually not going to be a problem, so we don't need to drop a rock in it. We could just... That means we can't kill either. Oh, some... Because dropping a rock here will do the same thing. Deal two damage to... Uh, to Genemy... Uh, sorry, to Zephyrkill, to Bethany. And we definitely don't want that. We only just hide her. We're not going to kill her off this quickly. The attack won't happen because the area will freeze. So not need, don't need to worry about that attack. So we can just sit here and watch this happen, I guess. Well, I could drop a rock here, which would push uh, Isabel out of the way, and then perhaps use Isabel. No, drop the rock here. If it, can I get that? Can I, I can't get into that column. Uh, push Isabel here. Isabel has four movement. One, two, three, four, five. I would need. I was thinking Isabel could then. Pull Zephykill out of this spot and out of the freeze. Again, unnecessary. Shouldn't be a problem with freezing on this final turn. But it would be nicer if we freeze the enemies and have his attack do nothing. It just feels a little more elegant. We can freeze two of ours. But I don't think that that's going to happen. Um, there's no buildings under the threat. There's no threat of dying. There's an attack that's going to be uh, defeated entirely by the armor. Wait, I'm just going to see what happens if I freeze a boulder. I'm just going to drop it here and let it freeze. Why not? This is probably this is probably bad, right? This is this is silly, but it's the last time. It should be fine. Okay, so if we get frozen, the repair skill can be used to free yourself from ice. That's good to know. Um, but again, it doesn't matter. And there we go. One of them escaped. Excellent news! My prognosticator subprocess has dramatically increased the odds of our survival based on your victory. We blocked the vex spawning actually several times, more than three. We got a bunch of XP, and we protected all civilians. That's a success. Next mission. Pinnacle Garden or Thermal Dampeners? Pinnacle Garden has frozen machines and lots of ice. Objectives, block the exporting three times and protect the power generator, which is uh, this building here. We've just done a block the exporting three times, okay. Um, protect the power generator. Well, we want to get we want to get some more power for our power grid there. Thermal dampeners. In the battle with less than four mech damage, protect the coal plant. Now this one has a lot of frozen mine freeze mines there, so anything stepping anything any its turn on a freeze mine will get frozen solid. And it's also got some ice and open water for knocking things in or pulling things into. And the coal plant being up the back is probably easier to defend. There's no difference between these two into which other areas they unlock. So I might as well go with the ones more interesting. We just did a block the vex spawning three times objective. And the battle less than four mech damage. Less than four. So maximum of three mech damage. Well, that's okay, because Isabel usually doesn't take damage unless we use a lightning attack on her. And Zephykill starts with a shield, and if we don't throw the shield away as willy-nilly as we did last time by dropping rocks on it, should be able to avoid uh, much damage there. Rockstar, staying up the back, doesn't tend to take damage. Now, the problem here for Rockstar is there's not a lot of maneuver room with these mines around the place. 
Uh, well, it's lim more limited. We'll have to hang around on this rank here. We can move. Pa we can move through the mine tiles. We just can't stop on them, so that's probably okay. Zappy kills it to the front to electrocute things. Israel sits up near to pull things hopefully into this water or that water, or maybe even that water. Yeah, let's give it a go. Do I want to rearrange any power cores? I don't. Let's do it. I calculate there are still 373 cryo mines in this area intended for pacification of hostile machines. Keep your sensors on high. Hornets, two hornets, an alpha hornet, and a centipede. A centipede's gonna be a nuisance. Because it leaves acid, which we cannot, uh, which we don't wanna walk through, and acid stays on the ground. But it might actually be of use, might actually attack. Our oh, enemies might walk through the acid, which would help us, so. Nothing. No scorpions and nothing that's going to obstruct us or stop us from actually, uh, you know, pin us in place. So that's good. And flying units, unfortunately, so only the centipede can be pulled into the water. Well, let's see how that works out. Zappy kill on the front lines. Gravel pie also on the front lines near the water. And Rockstar sitting up the back in a fairly central kind of position. Alternatively, no, up the back, up the back. The only question is, do I want to move Grapple Pie here? If Grapple Pie starts here, we have movement down, well not there, but around these tiles. Allowing us to pull enemies towards us here. We could pull something onto the mine to freeze it, which could be of use. I'm worried about the centipede, because the centipedes attack Fires in a straight line and we'll do, well, if I select it, fires in a straight line and then we'll do damage on the tile that it hits plus the two tiles adjacent. Which means you, we could block the attack, uh, which we don't want to do because it's acid, so it would leave us with a uh, an acid state. Um, The only other way to, if we can't kill, if we can't kill it, the only other way to defeat the attack, well, pulling it into the water is one thing. And from here, we could actually move back there to pull things into the water. But from here, we can't reach the site. Pulling it this way into the water might be an idea, or possibly just pulling it... Now look how dense these buildings are. There's no... Every every uh, file here has a building in it except the two ends. So whichever way, if we needed to pull it, then we can't pull it into the water. Then the only way we can actually stop its attack short of taking it is to pull it onto a freeze line. I don't know where it's going to be. It might just sit back here and, and attack. I don't know. Maybe it'll run onto a freeze mine itself. I don't know what the right choice is. I'm going to stay here... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No, I don't know. We might we might need to actually use Isabel to to block the attack. That wouldn't be ideal. Uh, the alternative is we could pull a hornet into the way to block the attack. If we could actually, if one of them was around here. But since they attack, this you know, a spot beside them, they're probably going to run right up here, or maybe even up there. So... No, I'll start here. I'll start here. It gives me options to pull sideways, which that one doesn't. We'll try that. See what happens. Well, my worries of the centipede are not a problem. It's frozen itself. So now we have three buildings under attack. One of these hornets we can drop a rock on uh, if I don't move. 
I could pull the Alpha Hornet back it over the water. It wouldn't hurt it, it flies so it wouldn't drown, but it would mean its attacks hit these two spots harmlessly. Alternatively, I could pull it onto Freeze Mine and simply neutralize it. That's a better outcome, but it means we've got less maneuverability next turn. That would leave us with a lightning attack and a rock to kill these two other hornets, which is totally doable. And no alpha hornet to worry about. I think that I think using the freeze mine to our advantage is the right call here. And the centipede did its job, did its you know did our job for us. So let's let's you know, let's move up here. And about the zero on the buildings is because it would go through the buildings if need be. It will chain through the buildings without damaging them. Let's electrocute this hornet. And let's stay here, move there, doesn't really matter. Let's drop a rock on that hornet. Okay, no mech damage. Coal plant still protected. And uh, four more turns. Scorpion and a Scarab. I do not like Scorpions. Oh look, they're lining up quite nicely there, aren't they? Uh, three new enemies next turn. The first second is a building. Scarab has one hit point, Scorpion has two, so we, if we drop a rock on the Scorpion and then electrocute the pair of them, that's problem solved. I think that's a good plan. Uh, not on building things. Two damage there. Oh. No. No. No, 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 no. I did not think that through. That's going to change through everything here. And it's going to free the Alpha Hornet. Ah, oh, dear. I forgot that we're electrically conductive as well. And that would actually kill one of our mechs and injure the other. That's really... I'm, I'm actually... Uh, I need to undo that. I don't have to, but I don't think I can defend the building if I don't. I could... Yoink this one out of the way? Do I need the reset turn later in the mission or can I use it now? I could move here, pull the scorpion here so its attack does nothing, and then just electrocute just the scarab to, de to defeat it. That would save the building when we'd be looking at four enemies next turn to, to deal with. Do I live with my mistake or do I undo it? I might need to undo a worse mistake than that. This is, you know, this is not a mistake where we've accidentally destroyed a building or anything. That's that's the sort of thing that's uh, terrifying, that needs reset turn for. Simply a missed opportunity for a double kill, I... Well, I might regret this. But I don't think... What else do we have? We have this. Artillery there will kill the Scorpion. because it will push into the water. That might actually be worth doing instead. Where can I move to? Where can I... Not, not very many places. Um, if I sit on the forest, I'm a little bit better for movement next turn, or maybe down here even. This corner this corner is a nuisance because it's blocked off. Made inaccessible by the building and the frozen alpha hornet, so... Here at least we've got more movement, op movement options. I don't want to be here. From here, I don't know. From here, I can't get pushed. So that's fine. And I don't get you don't take damage for trying to be pushed off the map because you're not actually being pushed into anything. So yeah, let's let's push that scorpion into the water. That damaged the ice. How did that damage the ice? Or did we damage the ice last time? I can't remember. Let's electrocute this beetle. Okay, 
resolved without wasting our reset turn. That's that's a happier outcome. I'm much more pleased with that. Mistake, whatever the mistakes are, it's a better result. Set the bead. Scorpion. So the scorpion wants to free its compatriot there. The other centipede. We have another alpha scarab which we must, which we really want to defeat this turn. What can we do here? Obviously, they're all bunched up. That's really nice for us. Um, the scorpion will do one damage. So if we could deal two damage, well, two attacks to the centipede, one to destroy the ice and then deal two damage to it. That would be lovely. Because then the Scorpion's attack would kill it, even if the Scorpion isn't dead. We have a Centipede's attack to worry about. I'm not sure how to deal with. It needs, we don't do three damage with our lanes or our rock, so we need more damage done to that. We definitely need to stop this Alpha Scarab's attack because otherwise it will hit the Cold Plant. And we definitely will need to save the Cold Plant to get some power back. So what options do we have? We could... Alternatively, we could just let the Scorpion's attack, hap uh, attack happen. I'm not too bothered if we have, the, if we have a two hit point. Centipede to deal with next turn. So which means we might want to use the rock. Where where can we get to? We can't even, we can't get up here. If we dropped we can't even get there. So we can't drop a rock onto the centipede. We could I can undo the move, so that's not a problem. I could drop the rock here. That would deal two damage to both the centipede and the scorpion and de deplete our shield. That's fine, we don't need the shield at all. And that means an electric attack would kill both of those. Now that means the scarab doesn't get hurt. What I'm thinking though is, if I did that, the electric attack will kill both of these. It'll obviously just defeat the shield. We'll have a Centipede with three hit points to worry about next turn, but I'm okay with that. And let's just undo that move. And in addition, after doing the electric attack, Grapple Pike would come down here and grapple the Scarab onto this spot. That means it will get killed. Well, first its attack happens, which would then hit the mine. I don't know whether that means the attack gets frozen or the mine just, just deploys harmlessly or whatever, but it will not defeat a building. Uh, it won't destroy a building, and that's what we're trying to protect. So, it's a bit, it nullifies its attack, and then when the spawning happens, it'll take two more damage, which in addition to lightning damage, should kill it. But I think the order of operations here is important. Um, the rock attack first, then the lightning attack, because I might not want to sit where I am to do it. I might want to move to a more advantageous position. And finally, the grapple. Let's give that a go. Dropping rocks on our friends again. Watch out. Oops. Sorry, Bethany, but you didn't need your shield, and that means you're going to get two kills this turn. So really, you should be happier. Is there any reason to move from here? Actually, no. That's not a bad spot to be in for next turn. So let's do our lightning attack on these four enemies. So there's a fresh centipede to worry about next turn and whatever spawns from this spot. Meanwhile, Isabel can grab all this Alpha Scarab out of the way and it will then die. I wonder who gets the XP from it. I guess I'll keep an eye on the meters here and find out. Mine exploded. Everyone gets some XP from it. Oh, well. The newly spawned enemy uh, solved one of our problems for us by freezing itself. So I have a choice. I can either get some XP for Ganymede 
I'm Bethany. By teaming up to kill this one. Well, I can't team up to kill that one. Or I can just kill it by pulling it into the water. With this valve. Hang on, if, if Bethany moves... Uh, we can't do three damage to the Scorpion anyway. We'd need three attacks. We'd need one to break the ice. And then two damage from the next attack, but that's we've only got two attacks on it. So I think I'll just leave it frozen. I'll defeat the only active enemy we need to worry about. And we just won't... You know, we can't farm any more XP out of this, but that's okay. No mech damage whatsoever, so we're gonna get this uh, first bonus objective. All the buildings survived, including the coal plant, and this is the end of the game. Yes, we've got actions available, we don't need them. Well, alright, let's. Come on. Splish! Okay, now we're on solid ground, so even if the ice melts, we're fine. Looks like we've got the Vec on the run. Success! Leave everything the cryo mines froze to my cleanup dro droids. I will devote the processing time to ensure they are safely disposed of. Bonus rep, because we took, we took less than four damage. Bonus power, which is great. We're re recovering from our, uh, you know, partial failures on the previous m missions. Protected all civilians. Bunch of XP. And a new region available. The Tundra. Vex threat detected. So, bonus objective, take less than three grid damage, which means less than three buildings hit. Now, that's obviously a goal we have anyway, but I wonder why that's harder. Because we have robots and Vex spawning. Interesting. The other alternative is Pinnacle Gardens. They're both the same in terms of the, uh, the rewards for the bonus objectives. One bonus power, one, one bonus rep. This one is block the Vex spawning three times and protect the power generator. And there's two frozen robots there which are going to thaw out and start attacking things as well. So you're blocking the Vec, you get less Vec, you still got the robots to deal with. Here we have robots again. Three robots to begin with. One of them's probably going to thaw on a later turn. And one Vec to begin with. Not much water. Lots of ice. Buildings are quite scattered, so enemies are probably not going to punch up very much. But there should be lots of movement opportunities. Whereas this one, lots of ice. Again, very little water, so probably, probably not a lot of chance to pull enemies into the water. Movement's going to be very constrained because it's all single file around these buildings. So that's probably means going to get blocked up a lot, even if you are blocking back spawning. I think I'm going to go for the Tundra. I cannot advocate killing the hostile machines in this region, but I acknowledge their threat is too great to ignore. Well, I'm sorry for you, but I can absolutely advocate killing them. An Alpha Scorp uh, Alpha Centipede. Not exactly what I wanted to see on the first turn. And what, what bots do we have? We have a laser bot, which has a piercing beam doing two damage adjacent and one further away, and that goes through things. So you can't just block its damage. I have a cannon bot, which has a projectile that does one damage. That one can be blocked if we need to. And another frozen cannon bot. Now the bots all have one hit point, so they should be relatively easy to kill as long as they're not in the way of anything much. So, where do I want to start? I don't know where they're going to move to, so I want Zappy Kill in the middle so there's room to get to where they are. Hmm. I'm just thinking about that centipede. Where is the centipede? likely to attack. It's probably going to want to attack one of these two buildings or one of these two. What's its movement? Its movement is two. So it's going to probably not move at all or move to one of these two tiles and fire this direction to try to attack both those buildings at once. 
if we sit here, we're probably encouraging it to move there instead, which is, might make it harder to deal with. We can always move around here, we can always come down here and pull it out of the way. There's nothing to pull it into, but we can always pull it out of the way and then attack it. So I'm actually going to start, start Isabel somewhere down here. So we have more movement options to pull this up and be sideways this turn, I think. That might be a bad idea. And I'll start Rockstar up the back where there's where she can get to uh, more more of these files. Well, let's see what the enemies are gonna do. Haha. <laughs> Haha. Alright, so Alpha Centipede did as expected, but we're not gonna be able to pull it sideways. However, we have a good lightning we have a we have a great lightning attack opportunity now right now. Look at this. Oh no, we're not gonna chain through all of them. But we can we can kill the robot and damage the Alpha Centipede, and then we can pull the Alpha Centipede out of the way. That's certainly certainly an interesting approach. We cannot drop a rock on this robot. That's a problem. Oh no, I'm sorry, we can. I was just miscalculating how we can move. Uh, so, is there anything better to do here? If, the alpha if we could pull the Alpha Centipede to here, like, pro no, probably to this spot, then its attack will Stop there, dropping acid on there. Now, does acid hurt if we move through it or only if we stop on it? Because if if Rockstar's up here and the acid is gonna stop us moving through it, that's bad. We're gonna be kind of trapped in this corner. Or have to take acid damage and then spend the turn repairing. Neither neither one would be good. We don't want to tank the acid damage because we definitely don't want the acid sitting up in this area where we need to move around. If I want a lightning attack room, where do I want to do it from? Doesn't really matter. The alternative is Zappy Kill moves out of the way, so here. That leaves Grapple Pie free to move up here, for example. That mean oh no, I, okay, sorry, acid, acid, uh, if we get hit by acid, that jams our weapon, so that's, I've, I mean, it's not actually happened. Um, but that's what it was telling us, so I don't know whether, I don't know whether moving through acid is a problem or not. Tanking the acid is a problem, because then our weapons are jammed and we have to spend the turn repairing to pull the acid off. So, I assume moving past the acid is not a problem, but I don't know for sure. Just like moving through the mines without setting them off was a thing, it's only stopping them was a problem. But what I, anyway, resuming my, my previous train of thought, uh, Zappy Kill coming down here somewhere, one of these two doesn't matter. Grapple Pie moving up here, what, one of these two, to pull this robot, this little laser bot here, over here, so these three are a nice group, all ready to be electrocuted at, together. That will kill both bots in one hit and do two damage to the Alpha Centipede. The problem we have then, that only does two damage to the Alpha Centipede. And it's got five hit points. We could drop a rock on it for an additional two, but that's only an extra two. An extra two is not what well, not good enough. So I think our original plan is with lightning these two and drop a rock on this one. Pull the Alpha Centipede out of the way is is what we need to do. I'm not going to drop a rock first because that would collide our two bots here and hurt them. So the first thing that needs to happen is uh, these two need to kind of get out of the way of each other. Let's, let's use some lightning. So I think I want to go there.
because that way the acid attack is not actually going to hit Rockstar immediately. Right. We have a wounded Alpha Centipede to deal with. We're going to have acid on those three tiles, which I hope is not going to impede our movement. I guess I'm going to find out. Scarab and an Alpha Scarab. Yikes. Alright, so the Alpha Scarab... The Alpha Scarab wants to destroy this building, the Scarab wants to destroy the coal plant, and the Alpha Centipede wants to destroy both of these buildings at once. Uh, the Alpha Scarab would also destroy both of these at once, so this... Less than three grid damage is our objective. Less than one grid damage is really our primary goal here. That's a threat of five grid damage right now, and we have three... Three things we could do. Three units we can move around to do something about this. Killing the Scarab should be no problem. We can electrocute it, or we can drop a rock in it. The Alpha Scarab... We really need to move that out of the way. I don't think we can kill it this turn. I'm not even sure if we can actually injure it. If we move it, if we can push it to there, for example, when this attack will hit this spot harmlessly. The Alpha Centipede, I don't know that we can kill it this turn. Not with that Alpha. Not when we have three enemies. Oh god, then we're going to have six enemies next turn. This is. Even if we kill one of these. What else can I do? To kill the Alpha Centipede is going to take two of our units working together. So one other unit cannot handle both the Scarabs because the Scarab, we can't, we can't just sit in the way of a Scarab attack and block it. And they choose to attack the buildings, not us, which is, I much prefer it when they choose to attack us. So, is that going to hurt us? No. Oh, it says it inflicts acid on the first unit that steps on the space. Now, we're not seeing an icon there saying we're going to get acid damage. On either account. I hope this means we're not going to get acid damage if, if we move up here. Because uh, I, I want to move there, ideally, so I can drop a rock in this mountain push the Scarab out of the way, and then the Alpha Scarab's attack is nullified. There's no way I can use any of these enemies' attacks against each other right now either, that's also unfortunate. So we'd probably pull the Alpha Centipede back to this spot again, so it hits the same tiles again. Uh, no, we can't pull it to that spot because we would be in the way, we'd have to pull it here. And then we come and electrify this Scarab. And then we have six enemies to deal with. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, six enemies means hopefully more chances they're bunched up, but who knows, it could be really, really, really bad. And I still don't know if this is gonna be if this is gonna hurt us. I can only find out. No, we're fine. Stopping the acid, I guess, would be a problem. So, Isabel can pull the Alpha Centipede out of the way. Rockstar can drop a rock on the mountain, moving the, the Alpha Scarab out of the way. So its attack is not going to cause us any problems. Uh, and hurting the mountain a little bit, sorry mountain. And we're going to walk up here and electrify this guy to destroy it. Five enemies next turn. Two alphas. Only one of them is slightly wounded. Yeah. Let's see what we can do. Splish. Splosh. We have a Blast Scion, a Hornet, and a Scorpion. The Blast Scion is going to make them explode on death, dealing damage all around them. 
Well, most of them are choosing to attack us. That's nice. Uh, we have an interesting opportunity here for chaining attacks through buildings, which would kill a hornet, but not the scorpion and not the alpha. The alpha's chosen to attack Isabel here, which is great, because we move out of the way, and then this attack harmlessly hits the edge of the map here, which is perfect. We have an alpha scarab again, only attacking a single building this time, which is better, but still not ideal. We have a blast scion, which... I think we want to kill first of all, because if we don't, then say we kill this hornet, it's gonna, if we kill this hornet, it's gonna damage everything around it, but that includes this building. We don't really want to risk blowing up buildings. Hmm. On the other hand, it would help us kill the upper centipede, perhaps. Because it would take two damage from lightning and then one more from that exploding, which would mean the lightning attack would kill it at the risk of one building. If we run up there and do lightning right away, we'd hurt the scorpion, we would kill both of these, and we'd have two moves left. Two moves left to nullify a scorpion and an alpha scarab. And how would we do that? We pull the scorpion somewhere. And we could move up here, because the path would be clear, and drop a rock here to once again push the Alpha Scarab out of the way. Where's the attacking? Yeah. I don't know. Let's, let's keep that in mind. I have an option of risking damage to this building to kill both these enemies at once. Alternatively... And that, let's say we drop a rock. Alternatively, let's say we drop a rock on the blast scion. It's dead. Then we electrify this lot. The hornet's dead. These two are still alive. That's two. Two attacks used. Our only damage in the attacks used. And then we have these two enemies still to neutralize. And the best we could do is try and pull this one out of the way, which we won't be able to do because there's nowhere. With the Alpha Centipede in the way, we actually won't be able to get a line to pull it. Uh, we could use our artillery then to push it out of the way. Like artillery here and push it sideways. All artillery on this one to push it out of the way. Actually, rather than using the rock, in the first scenario, rather than using the rock to push the Alpha Centipede out of the way, the artillery would be better. Um, I think because I would leave us to drop a rock on here and actually kill all three enemies. Killing all three enemies with risk of damage to one building. If we don't, because if we don't, if we don't make use of the blast, then I don't think we can kill the Alpha Centipede, and we're left with two attacks to neutralize with one enemy, so we're still going to have risk of damage to one building. Any question in my head is, uh, who's got the artillery? Yeah, that's not actually going to push the frozen robot, so it won't even freeze, un unfreeze the robot. You know what? I think that is actually what we should do. Drop a rock on the scorpion. Elect uh, electrify everyone here, which... Oh, which will include Rockstar if Rockstar's sitting there because of chaining through buildings. Also include Rockstar if Rockstar is sitting here, or even there. Yeah, dropping a rock on the on the scorpion does not seem to be a viable option. In fact, electro electrocuting these right now is going to kill Rockstar. Electrocuting them, Rockstar has to move away from all of those. You know, can't move into the acid without disabling the weapon. Can't move there because it's chained to the building. Can't move here or there because it's chained to the enemies. Rockstar would have to sit here. Hmm. Then we electrify the others. Um. One of the buildings potentially takes damage. Hornet and Alpha Scorpion die. Sorry, Hornet and Alpha Centipede die. Scorpion. He's not dead. 
Half the Scarab is not dead. So we still, we'll still end up with only Grapple Pie left to do anything with one attack and two enemies to neutralize. We'll still have a rock we can launch, which conveniently could be onto the blast zone to kill it, but that won't really help us stop buildings being attacked. I don't want buildings to be attacked. We do have a 27% chance an attack will be resisted, but it's not, it's not a percentage you can really uh, bet heavily on. Still more likely than not that we would lose two buildings. Three, in fact. Well, two. One of one that we inflicted, and two from the enemies. On the plus side, we'd have three dead enemies. So we'd have a total of three next turn to worry about. Oh dear. Am I missing something even better here that could work? It seems silly not to use electrification on this group. I mean, that's, that's obvious to do so. If we kill the Blast Scion first, then when the Hornet dies, it will not kill the Alpha Centipede. It also won't risk damaging the building. Then the Alpha Centipede's attack is not a concern. Because it'll just hit here. The Artillery can still be used to neutralize the Alpha Scarab. We've still got the problem of the scorpion. So we're still stuck with two buildings. No, that would be one building risking just being destroyed, right? We'd have a live Alpha Centipede, a live Scorpion, a live Alpha Scarab, a dead Blast Scion, and a dead Hornet. We wouldn't be inflicting damage on the buildings. We would be having Hornet's attack would be nullified. Alpha Centipede's attack would be nullified. Scorpion's attack would still go ahead and risk one building being destroyed. Risking one building is a lot better than risking two buildings. So as much as I'd like to get, you know, dramatic explosive kills, um, I don't, don't really think we can risk it. If Rockstar had more health, Rockstar could just go sit up here as the first move, drop a rock on that Scorpion, while well, we still have the Blast Zone alive, and then the electrifying attack would actually kill all three of them. And then we'd artillery this guy out of the way, as before, and leaving Blast Zone and him alive. But I think we're going to leave the Alpha Centipede alive this turn, as much as I dislike it. It'll be on one hit point, so it should be easy enough to kill next turn if, if the opportunity arises. But I can't risk killing Ganymede. I can't risk attacking two buildings. Uh, sorry, I can't risk losing two buildings when we only need to risk one. So yeah, let's not let's not let these enemies explode. Boom. So now Bethany can run up here and try all four at once, killing the Hornet and injuring the other two. Oh! He was standing on a forest. This is brilliant. Scorpion was standing on a forest and I didn't even notice. That means he's on fire now and the very first thing that happens is fire damage. So that Scorpion is going to die. We're going to neutralize the other two attacks. And we can actually block this enemy as well, so making it easier for us next turn. So we're not even risking one... Oh man, if I'd realised this, this would have been an obvious move. We're not even risking one building being attacked. This is brilliant. Um, wait, which one is he attacking? Do I want to drop his bomb on the mountain, or do I want to push him into the corner of the map? What's his movement? Three. So he can move a lot anyway. That make, really makes no difference. Let's shove him to the corner of the map. Great, we should survive with no building this turn with no buildings hurt. Scorpion burns to death. Alpha Centipede splashes the edge of the map. And Alpha Scarab hits empty ground. Now we block the spawn. But no damage. Okay, it's the last turn we have. Alpha Scarab is once again 
trying to go for these same two buildings that it started off attacking. The Alpha Centipede is trying to attack those. Now, all we need to do to stop the Alpha Scarab is push it again to one side. So dropping a rock on this mountain from here, unfortunately it will destroy the mountain, but it will also move this guy out of the way and neutralize its attack. I don't think we can kill him this turn. Um, to kill him we'd have to get these two together for a lightning attack and drop a rock on him. And I don't see that happening. I don't see how we, we don't have any way of getting them side by side. I need my lightning attack to kill the centipede. Basically. And Grapple Pie has no ability to deal damage. No water to pull anything into. So Grapple Pie might as well just, I don't know, do whatever seems fun. Well, if we kill the centipede, we can grapple. Well, grapple Pie could actually move up here and pull the Alpha Scout this way. So it's attack hits somewhere here for a change, and we don't have to destroy a mountain. I don't think it makes any difference. Um, don't think it makes any difference at all. Let's go. Let's move well out of the way so that we have other movement options if we care, but let's destroy this enemy. 5 XP. Nice. Uh, Bethany's getting pretty close to her final level up already. In fact, she's overtaken Isabel in uh, XP, but that's not surprising because the lightning attack easily gets multiple kills. So we need to drop a rock somewhere. To punt the scarab out of the way. I look for this mountain. And Isabel has nothing much to do. Hey, we've never used this move before. Grappled myself onto something else. But it's, it's pointless. So, that's it. The Alpha Scarab will attack will miss. It will retreat and we will survive with all objectives and all buildings intact. Splish! Now run away! Excellent. So one thing that's really clear to me is the, the fact that we're doing two damage out of the box with two of these units instead of one has made a huge difference. Even even it, leaving aside the chain ability of the lightning, I think dealing two damage out of the box has made a huge difference in our ability to uh, keep these enemies under control. And we're saving... We, have not, we haven't quite had a perfect run of uh, building save, but we're doing a lot better than we were last game. So we got we took less than three grid damage. We took zero in fact, and that gives an extra rep. We protected the coal plant, which gives an extra power. So our power grid is now back up to full. That's brilliant. We got one power last mission. We got one power this mission. And the corporate HQ is now under attack. Right, corporate HQ is under attack. There's a Scion abomination. I wonder what that is. I'm going to, once again, I'm going to end this episode here because it's been uh, a bit over an hour and I'm going to have a quick tea break and then I'm going to come back for another hour after this. So if you're still watching then, uh, please, please go make a cup of tea for five minutes. I'm going to take a five minute break and see you here for the next episode.